All right, so here we are, part three of our stock market prediction series where we are using TensorFlow to make stock market predictions. <clears throat> All right, now, first thing I wanna run through quickly today is another data capture script because remember, in this part, we're gonna be making actual predictions. We're gonna be using our model to make predictions. So in order to do that, we're gonna use another data file where it just contains the current day's stock market data. That's it, right? We used historical data to train our model. Now we have our model, and we just want to use the current day stock market data to make the predictions. So it's a, the script is 99% the same as historical. We're just going to pull out one day. There's And there's one other difference that I'll show you here. So let's take a look at the script. It's called Data Capture Daily. For the most part, a lot of this is the same, only our days to include parameter. Remember here. We're multiplying that by 250 days, we we're saying, and by the number of years to get our total um, days to include. Whereas here, we're just going to set it to one. Simple. Okay, because we only want the current day. Okay, great. Uh, no change here, right? Uh, now, when we write out our header record, you'll notice one difference here. There's no Y column, right? It ends at percent change. That's because we don't know what, what, what the stock price is going to be um, the next day, right? We're trying to predict what it's going to be. So we don't need a column Y. We're not, we're not, right? We're not using that to train, right? We're trying to make the prediction now. Okay, so that's that. So the other difference you'll see here is in the historical data, we were using the current percent change to set our Y value, right? To, to, to create our training data. But here, we're actually going to include that in our data set. We didn't include that here. If you'll notice here, right, we did set percent change, right? This is the current day, right? Number of days minus one, that's the index, right? So that's going to be the current, the most recent um, day, right? And we only use that here to set our Y column, right? That's because, but we didn't include it down here, right? We started at percent change one, which was the next day, right? So not to be confusing, but the reason why that is is because we don't want to give our model the answer, right? If we're using the current days, and, and now we're talking about historical now, right? Our training data now, right? If we're using the current day to set our label, our Y, right? The column we want to train the model on, we can't include that in our data set because that would give our neural network the answer, right? And then it would be useless to us, right? Because we don't, the point, the point is, we don't have this in real time when we go to make predictions, right? We don't know what it's going to be the next day. But when we go back and create our training data, we have to give it the answer, right? So hopefully that makes some sense. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, but now that we are making predictions, we are going to include that column in our data set, right? Because we want to predict the next day, right? Well, we, but when we create our historical training data, we were actually, you know, looking back a day. I don't know. <laughs> It's confusing, but if you read through the script, it'll probably make some sense. I'll put this all on GitHub, um, and I'll put a link in the description. So, okay. And then here we're just writing that single day out to a file. So, and we're naming the file just marketdatadaily.csv, and this is the file we will use to make predictions, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and run this. I don't want to spend too much time on this. It's just data collection. You can view the script on GitHub. So there we go. We ran it, and here's our data file. Notice there's no column Y. And here are our values. And there's only a single day. It's the most recent day, right? And we want to use this information to predict what the stock price is going to do tomorrow. Okay, great. Now let's move on. Uh, the other change I made was I renamed our train model script to train model and predict because we're going to be training the model and making predictions in the same script. Now you might say, well, why aren't we separating them? Normally you would, you would do your training, you create your model, then you'd save the model and you would just use the model going forward. The reason why I'm doing it all in one script, training and then making the prediction, is because with stock market data, I find it is better to frequently retrain your model, and that's because data can get stale very quickly in the stock market, right? What's, what's happening in the more recent time is more relevant than what happened six months ago, right? So if your model is six months out of date, I find it will be less effective. So you want to, it's, it's always better, especially in the stock market, in my personal opinion, to retrain your model frequently. So you have, so you're, so you're making use of the most recent data. Um, so that's why. So whenever this script runs, it's going to retrain itself, download the data, 
right? Or import the data, right? The historical data. Retrain itself, then import the daily data, then make a prediction, okay? So it's always gonna be a fresh model. Okay, so that's that. So that's why I renamed it so it makes more sense. Okay, great. So now let's open this script and let's scroll down to the bottom where we are going to add some code. Okay, so what are we going to be doing? Well, we are going to be, let's just put a comment here. We're going to call this uh, make prediction. Simple enough. Okay, great. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to load our file. So we'll create a, a new variable here, data file path, I'll we'll call it prediction, whatever, we'll call it equals, so let's shorten this a little bit. And that will be this file, market data daily.csv, okay, great. And then we're gonna use pandas to read in that file, so we'll make a file market data prediction equals pd.read csv, and we will pass in this variable. So now we've read in our, um, our file. So let's create, um, I don't think we need our field names here. Now, so this is the port part where I would probably normalize the data, but again, remember I said we're skipping that for this part, um, but that's very easy to do. You can always look that up. Um, uh, so we're skipping that for this step because our data is pretty pretty close together anyway. Um, so yeah. All right. So here we're gonna let's create. We probably don't need to do this again, but I am. We're gonna recreate our feature columns. So I'll just copy and paste that down here. We'll reset them again. I probably don't need to do this step, but. I do it. Um, okay. Now, let's also copy this. All right, we're going to create our list of columns. So we'll just copy and paste, and we'll rename this prediction. Okay, now we need our input data, right? So we're going to put it in a variable x data equals market data predict. Um, yep, that's all we need. Now the other thing we need, we need our prediction function. So prediction input function equals tensorflow. So this again, looking probably looking very familiar at this point. Estimator dot inputs dot pandas input function. We're going to pass that x equals x data. Um, oh, yeah. Batch size doesn't really matter at this point. Number epochs doesn't matter really. We're just we're making a prediction, right? So we're not training. So this batch size, is number of epochs, it's, doesn't matter at this point. Um, I, I probably don't even need to set these, but I do anyway. But remember, we're just, it's just going to be one record. And we're just making a prediction. Um, okay, so now predictions. Did I spell that right? Predictions, yeah. Equals. Now, this is the important step. Okay, this is where we're going to use the model and then model that we trained in up here, right? So we're going to reuse this now. Okay, and we call NN. Remember, this was in the previous video, right? And then model dot predict. And we pass it the predict input function. Okay. That was passed our x data, right? That was our new CSV file, right? That only contains the current day's market data, trying to predict what's going to happen tomorrow. So we can buy our stock. So we, if, it, if it gives us a buy signal, right? If it gives us a one, we want to then, as soon as the market opens, right? Buy that stock. Okay. Ho uh, with the expectation that that stock is going to rise by at least 1%. Okay. 
Okay. All right, great. Now, we'll go to um, whatever. My prediction equals convert it to a list. We'll convert the results to a list. Prediction. Okay, great. Now we will print prediction results. Okay, and we will print my prediction. Um, usually, what I like to do is I extract. Well, you'll see. Let's 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 just. I usually like to extract the, the actual value, right? The zero or the one, right? So this is how I extract the actual value. Um, Cause you're gonna get more stuff in there, so you'll you'll see. All right, equals a converted to an integer because we're zero or one. My prediction zero. Cause you're gonna get a whole this what what this is gonna return, right? Is a whole bunch of stuff. It's not gonna be just zero or one. It's gonna return a whole bunch of other stuff. So you gotta kind of pull that out. Um, pull the actual value out of there. So that's what this is going to do, right? So it's, and it's in the um, uh, classes. And then zero. Okay, that's how you get to the actual value. And then we'll print that. Print prediction value. There we go. Okay, great. Now, honestly, when I implement this script at this point, I, I set it up so that I schedule this to run every day, and at the end of the script, I set it to send myself email alerts so I get alerted um, when it makes a prediction or it gives me a buy signal. That's how I do it. Uh, but yeah, okay, so this is now finished. We should be able to run this and see our results. So hopefully, we didn't make any mistakes, um, and this will take a little bit to train. Should be fairly quick uh, once it gets started, and then this should give us our results. And here we go. It's running. Again, the red text it doesn't mean there was an error. Every time I see it, it, <laughs> it scares me. Okay, there we go. And here's our results down at the bottom. You can see. We have our prediction results. See, this is what this is what I was saying when I said this returns a bunch of jargon. So look at prediction results. That's all that that returns, right? It returns a lot of stuff, not just zero or one, right? And then this step down here is how we extracted the value zero, and then you can see that here. So our prediction for this was zero. It means it did not give us a buy signal, so it's saying do not buy this today. Um, so we would not make a move if this had predicted a one. I would typically wait until, now it depends if you're trading, it depends on how you're trading this, right? You can do it before market open um, in the pre-market, but that's that can be dangerous sometimes. Um, or you do it as soon as the market opens, you buy the stock, right? Um, so yeah, so so that's that. That, that. that wraps up our stock market prediction using TensorFlow. All right, so that'll do it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And also check out jamestechtips.com for more BI-related content. And thanks for watching.